Ladies and gentlemen, our inductee, Danny Parker. Danny Parker's athletic achievements started as an all-county basketball star in 1965 at Claysville Junior High. Here, Parker throws another one with number 61, Ricky Slayton, blocking. Captain of the 9-2 Marshall County High School Wildcat football team in 1967, Parker rallied the team in what is the most dramatic come-from-behind last-second win in Wildcat football history. Huntsville held a 7-6 lead with a minute 40 left when Parker drove the Wildcats from their 30-yard line to the Huntsville 5, and from there, David Amata kicked a 22-yard field goal with three seconds remaining. Parker, in the winning drive, hit key passes before the last second field goal. Here is a part of that great drive as heard on WGSV's Saturday morning delayed broadcast. Marshall County High School of Gunnersville trailing by one point. They blocked the uh, attempted punt out of the end zone there and recovered it for a touchdown, kicked the extra point, and Huntsville is now leading. Here's the passing attack, Danny Parker throwing up Phil. He's got his man, Looney. he's up on the 45. Up near the 48 yard line, Butch Looney caught that pass. And the official has to separate him down there on the 48 yard line with a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Butch Looney caught that pass from Danny Parker and up on the 48 yard line, it's good enough for a first down. Minute and 40 seconds remain. They're down on the 28 yard line with a first down on the 28 yard line, 30 seconds remaining in the game for the Marshall County High School Wildcats. Here's Danny Parker throwing to Butch Looney. Butch steps out of bounds. Picks up that first down, down on the 18 yard line. 25 seconds remaining in the game. They're getting in field goal range now. I understand, what's his name, Mike? David Amato. David Amato can kick the field goals. He's got pretty good distance. We, we can't ever tell. It's down on the 19 is where they spot it down. It's worth a try to win this ball game. Boy, I'm for it. <laughs> well, as I said, their offense and defense both has met their test tonight, and it's been an exciting ball game. Well, these Marshall Wildcats, uh, you could tell who's the outstanding team. They've outplayed the Huntsville Panthers. Not a doubt about that, is it? Oh, for sure, that's right. Okay, it's a bad break on that blocked punt down there, but here we go, Danny Parker throwing, he's got Jarman down to the five yard line. They calling timeout, 15, 16, 15 seconds. No more timeouts left. 15 seconds remaining in this ball game. Official calls timeout, 14 seconds. It's down on the four yard line. Mike Jennings throwing that around. Mike Jennings, I just had to wait folks. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Uh, the official uh, signal, uh, signal from the start the clock. Beecher, tell them sure. about it. Huh? Well, the, the official signal to stop the clock. Well, when they stopped the clock, one of the boys came over to the coach. Well, immediately, said, start the clock. immediately when he started to walk over to the coach, the official said, start the clock. So now then, it's bedlam and confusion out on the field. With bedlam and confusion, the clock had started with Danny Parker headed toward the sidelines to talk with Coach Coleman. An official signal to start the clock and it was running down as Mike Jennings quickly stepped up under to take the snap and throw the ball out of bounds to stop the clock with three seconds. Jennings' action had to be the number one decision under pressure by any Wildcat athlete ever. Here's the results. Right, here it is on the five yard line. Three seconds remaining in the ball game. A field goal attempt by Marshall. Amato, Amato will attempt the field goal for the Marshall County High School Wildcats. Good. It's good. It's good. I believe you could tell it was good. The field goal attempt by David Amato. Last play of the ball game, Gunnersville winning on the field goal by a margin of 9-7 over the Huntsville Crimson Panthers in the first home game of the 67 campaign at the Wildcat Stadium. Twice in 1967, Danny Parker was named the Alabama High School Back of the Week by the Associated Press, a distinction that no other back achieved that year. He first received the honor following the 9-7 upset of Huntsville. He was chosen again following a 21-14 win over the unbeaten Etowah Blue Devils. Following the Wildcats' victory, legendary coach at Etowah, Jim Glover, said Parker's play, especially on the rollout option, was the difference in the game. Danny scored.
scored once while running the ball 27 times for 133 yards and passing for 52 yards. Let's go back 40 years and listen to the comments about Danny Parker from his head coach, Hollis Coleman. Then on October 27, the uh, Etowah game and a game down at uh, Atala, Alabama at the Etowah Bowl. And this is one of the big games on our schedule, uh, what we consider probably our toughest opponent. Yes, Bill, they were number one in the state all year long up until we played them. The week before we played them, they put them number two. We hated that because we wanted to play the best. And uh, we look forward to the game. Ever since I've been in Alabama four years now, I've heard of Edwall and in that den down there, they play football. And they said, you can't beat the Blue Devils in the den. And everybody talks about it, and everybody just scared to death of the game. Like you say, I'm sure if you're a betting man, you could have went on the Etowah side of the field over there on the side of the fans of Etowah were sitting at. And uh, after they were ahead 14 to nothing, you could have probably got any amount of bets that uh, we're not going to win, the, lose this ball game now, being ahead 14 points. But they had us down 14 to nothing. We came storming back, won the game by a 21 to 14 score. And Danny Parker, for his performance in this game, was again named the back of the week in the state of Alabama by Associated Press. That's right, Bill. Danny uh, ran the ball quite a few times on uh, the Beeb and Sweep, the same one that UCLA has. We run it because of Parker's ability, ability to run, and he had a tremendous amount of success with it that night, with Charlie Connors about front leading him all the way. And uh, the two of them, actually, we had good blocking from everybody, but you could just pick those two out because they were out front. Charlie Connors was usually knocking down one, two, and sometimes three at the time. And Parker right in his hip pocket running the football, and it was a, it was a game where the best football team won, and our kids became men. Here is the rest of the coaching staff. On the front, kneeling left to right, Curtis Williams and Hollis Coleman. Standing left to right, Jackie Thrower, David Hart, and Bill Tibbet. Parker, the most valuable player of Marshall County and MCHS, was outstanding on offense and defense all year. He had seven interceptions during the season and blocked the extra point to save the Wildcats 7-6 victory over a -Rack. Parker and the MCHS Wildcats clawed their way into the state playoffs by outscoring Albertville 42-19 at Aggie Stadium. The 14 seniors on the Wildcats squad serving as co-captains of the big playoff game, Danny Parker and Mike Jennings were in front observing the toss while these others lined up behind them. From the left, tackle Alan Stoner, number 74. Guard Ricky Slayton, number 61. Tackle Larry Kelly, number 70. In Gip Long, number 81. Tackle Robert Rivers, 72. Linebacker Pudgy Carter, 32. Guard Charles Cunner, 62. End Ricky Bynum, 84. Halfback Jimmy Neely, 41. Guard Dwayne Elder, 65. End Ricky Kinnamer, 85. And guard John McGriff, 63. Here's a gathering of the 1967 MCHS athletes and cheerleaders. On the first row, left to right, Larry Kelly, John McGriff, Freddie Henley, Charlie Connor, Mike Jennings, Danny Parker, Jimmy Neely, Pudgy Carter, George Davies, the manager, Gip Long, Ricky Kenimer, and Ricky Bynum. Second row, left to right, Calvin Jones, Thomas Caldwell, Bimbo Moss, Mark Pass, Van Newman, Billy Wingo, Jimmy Word, Vern Etherton, Mike Ellenberg, Bobby McCormick, David Amato, Tom Rivers, and Jerry Sandusky. On the back row, left to right, Mike Carboni, Van Phillips, Charles Smith, Butch Looney, Dwayne Elder, Walter Alvis, Eddie Woodall, Lynn Jarman, Brent Lusk, Jody Chorba, and Bill Norwood. The cheerleaders up top there, left to right, Karen Brookshire, Pat Ryan, Rebecca Jackson, Marianne Bartlett, Liz Kyle, Jenny Glover, and Kathy Harden. Wow, what a 4A All-State team, only 11 on the first team, and most were two-way players, offense and defense. Sullivan, Beasley, Musso, Rosser, and Jennings. Mike Jennings on the first team, and honorable mention for Danny Parker. Also above in the honorable mentions at guard, Weaver of a -Rab. The 1967 backs left to right, kneeling. Number 20, Eddie Graves. Number 10, Danny Parker. Standing, left to right, number 32, Pudgy Carter, number 14, Mike Jennings, number 41, Jimmy Neely. John H. McGriff, Jr., and the Ironman Trophy awarded to John from the coaches. 
Chosen by their teammates, the members of the MCHS football team selected these players for the awards at the annual football banquet. From the left, Charles Conner, outstanding offensive lineman, Mike Jennings, outstanding offensive back, Danny Parker, most valuable player and outstanding defensive back, Larry Kelly, outstanding defensive lineman. Rita Mohan and Danny, the most athletic. All three were seniors. All three died accidental deaths following their senior football season. And Mike Jennings had signed to grant an aid with Auburn University. For Danny, his football career did not end with the loss to number one Sidney Lanier at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery. He is now a Chattanooga moccasin. Parker and his Wildcat teammate Ricky Bynum became Chattanooga moccasins for coach Harold Wilkes. Danny was a flanker and tied in on offense. Bynum was a linebacker and served as leader of the defense. Parker number 84. Parker lettered four years and never missed a game as a three-year starter. Team and individual opponents were Pat Sullivan of Auburn, Archie Manning of Ole Miss, Hacksaw Reynolds, and the current Vols coach Philip Fulmer of Tennessee, Terry Bradshaw of Louisiana Tech, and Watson Brown of Vanderbilt. The year following graduation from Chattanooga, Parker coached Glenwood High School of Phoenix City, Alabama to the Alabama Private Schools Athletic Association State Baseball Championship. His championship team lost only one game, but was able to avenge that loss in the regular season and again in the playoffs. Parker is a longtime employee with the U.S. Army at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. He lives in Madison, Alabama, where he is a Sunday school leader at the First Baptist Church. Before moving to Madison, he lived in Gunnersville, serving on the City Council, the Board of Education, Park and Recreation Board, and as a youth baseball coach. Parker served as deacon, teacher, and Sunday school director of the Gunnersville First Baptist Church. Never far away from sports as a spectator or participant, Parker played basketball here at MCHS in Gunnersville and later served as a certified basketball official from 1979 to 1990. His son Matt followed in the footsteps of his father serving as quarterback and captain of the Wildcat football team in 1993. Ladies and gentlemen, our inductee representing the 9-2 Wildcat football team of 1967. It was 27 years later in 1994 before another Wildcat team would win as many as nine football games. Here is Danny Parker, our inductee.